Can we just stop living through history for five oh, yeah. minutes? I wish you had go to sleep for like, and you said like, like, like nothing major happened in the next few hours. And then. Yeah. Uh, in case you missed it over the weekend on Sunday, a Sunday afternoon when nothing ever F-ing happens, which is apparently a brilliant move on their part. Keep going. I got on the twitters.com and I said to everyone, I says, I'm going to take a nap. Behave while I'm gone. And three hours later, I wake up and Biden's out of the race and the entire internet's gone. Lily tunes, the f did I say? The f f did I? You had one job. One f. What? Mm. So. <laughs> Lewis Linkara, our intrepid comic book uh, reviewer on the YouTubes. Thank you so much for stopping in this week, considering uh, Tara was went to New York to see family, and she is currently traveling home, meaning by the time she gets there, she's going to be feeling freaking ick. So I, I appreciate you hopping in to help out. How are you doing, by the way? I'm just ducky. I could be better at a lot of things. Financial stuff is is not great right now. So I'm going to take a moment to plug my merch store. <laughs> you put me on here. You asked me to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to Go be ahead. shameless. Shameless self-promotion. I'm giving you the link. Care. If I can actually like find the link. Why can't I find? There's the link. There are no links. Oh, look at that. Why, there seems to be some kind of store atop dash the dash fourth dash wall dot store envy dot com, which promotes, which, which sells many things like Robomats, which I'm printing one right now over there. And what? little Comicron one models and little badge cards and little tiny mini Poyos, which also is over there because I didn't, forgot to grab one to show off to the camera. Here's a, here's, here's one. He's little, little robot. It's little. It's three D printed. I got a multicolor three D printer, and it's and, and that's why with the noise you're hearing in the background. Ah, too loud, too loud. Each week, what? Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide airwaves, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. And uh, I'm crazy for well. So it's this is a first because well I probably should usually hate when there are firsts on the show this is a first um quite often we have all sorts of various and sundry hits and runs on this stupid show of uh, like you were last time you were here someone hit a tree and ran with the tree Remember someone, uh, was it a moose or a cow that they, that they got into a fist fight with and they lost, yeah. of course? This week, I've never seen, this is a hit and run at sea by way of a fucking oil tanker. Bring this over here. Malaysia. Tracks down missing oil tanker, which fled after collision. <laughs> Malaysia says it intercepted a large oil tanker that was involved in a collision with another ship before fleeing the scene and turning off its tracking system. Coast Guard said it is located and detained Ceres 1, sailing under the flag of Sal Tome and Principe, and two tugboats that were towing the vessel off the country's eastern coast. Ship collided with Singapore-flagged uh, Hafnia Nile, I think, on Friday, causing both ships to catch fire. Officials in Singapore say all crew members on both ships were rescued. No one was injured. Um, had the Malaysian Coast Guard search and rescue team had not explained why the tanker tried to flee, but added that further investigations will be carried out. So, 
you are a freaking super tanker. You are, and you think, oh no, I've got like only two points left on my license. What the yeah, fuck? Are you? <laughs> like, what in the fuck? Did, where are you going? What did you, oh, we'll just turn off the tracker. They'll never find us. You're Larry. a super tanker. Larry, I'm in trouble. I need to bring, bring this boat to the body shop. Can you fix it and make it look like there was no crash? <laughs> we, we can see your ass from space. Literally. You, can, you are visible from the heavens. Where are you taking the... Th I, I, I am baffled by this. No, Larry, I'm, I'm fine. I don't have to worry about it. I mean, it's not like it's on fire. Like, okay, Larry, there might be a bit more damage than I thought. <laughs> how the fuck? How is it? They're on fire, too. Like, like, like the best I could guess, you know, if I was trying to be optimistic was like, maybe he was trying to, since the boat was on fire and all the fuel was on fire, maybe he's trying to keep it away from the coast. But like, you wouldn't turn off your communications for that. You would warn <laughs> people. Nope, they, they, they can't see us now. We're invisible. Captain, that's not how that... They were invisible! <laughs> the fucking hell. <laughs> like, I understand some dipshit who's drunk in his fucking Camaro and he sideswipes somebody. Sure. I can understand them thinking they can try and drive. You're a... This isn't just one person. There's a whole bunch of sailors who went, this is a good plan. I'm on board with this plan. This will work. The, the, the best guess seems to be actually at the bottom of the article. Uh, Series one is a large crude oil carrying super tanker. Some reports suggest to be part of a so-called dark fleet carrying oils from countries under sanctions. So it, which would explain why they decide you know, to do to, to like, uh oh, we don't want any attention. But again, if the boat is on fire, the boat is on fire, visible from space and you you're traveling. At this point, you're just making it worse. Like a goddamn sea dew could catch up with you. <laughs> you're, you're not. Some people could. You can get out and run faster than some of these boats sometimes. The hell are you thinking? Like, well, did you show up? Excuse me. Uh, we had reports of a uh, hit and run. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that. No. Nope. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> not a not a damn thing. God damn it. Uh, here's another one. This is this is actually one that has happened before and will happen again, as they say. I didn't think I'd get to use this line again so soon, but I do. Oh boy. Son. You got a panty on your head. Boston police seek help identifying underwear masked bandit in an alleged armed robbery. BPD, community alert, detectives assigned to District A1, A15, seek the public's help to identify the following individual in relation to an armed robbery in Charlestown. Yeah, this is not quite the town with Ben Affleck, is it? Uh, detectives assigned are seeking public assistance. Suspect is described as a white male with tattoos on his right forearm, wearing a blue t-shirt, gray running pants with dark stripes, and uh, black sneakers. And while the article fails to mention is, you know, just I what I really love about this guy is that he tries like several different ways to attempt to conceal his identity and is failing the entire time because he's on camera with this damn thing. So not only do you have a pair of underwear on your head, you have a pair of pointless underwear on your head. Like you, you've, you've placed yourself in a situation where not only did you put, you know, pants on your head, there's no point to it. It's a lose-lose. And people in the channel are going, I am Cornholio. Kinda. Getting some Cornholio vibes, yes. 
even Cornholio knew how to put it on the right the first time. I, like, that's all... guy, that's, if you like, if you like, if you like, if Beavis was just just like, I am good. Give me a second. And we have talked about this before. If you need to conceal your identity in a hurry, this, you could just do this. Well, it's can't do that. It's silly. <laughs> it's just, it's far more effective. Why? Uh, just <sighs> like, I, the, the fuck is he going to disappear? So like, you are not concealing <laughs> shit. I mean, it just leaves so many questions. Are these his underwear? Did he just buy? Did he just buy a pair from a Target and, and put this on? Does that mean he can write them off as a business expense, or because you you know you got to pay taxes on crime, right? Why not just buy a ski mask? <laughs> Right, if you were in the Target getting a pair, like, excuse me a second, why, why can't, the, the masks are over there. And here's the other thing, we are in an era where if you want a mask, this is the easiest time in our lives to obtain a mask. <laughs> and you decide, no, no, underwear. Underwear is the ticket. Look, I live in a small town, there wasn't a lot of options. And only and only the, this place was open. I grabbed a pair and I and I ran. It's not my proudest moment. No, what? what are the How things, was I supposed to know there were two holes in the underwear? One of the weird things about America, and I'm sure that the people who are outside of this, if you're not aware of this, it's bizarre. If you commit crimes and profit from them, you have to pay in. You have to pay the IRS taxes on crime. Yep. Like it's a weird old world. It's weird. Like you'd think, no, no, you don't get to keep any of that, but the IRS is, we get a piece of your crime. Which in any other instance would make them an accessory. But no, no, that's that's just that's just accounting, I guess. <sighs> All right, now, Lewis, I promise, I swear I promise I did not do this on purpose. I promise you I did this. I didn't do this happened. It's not on purpose. And a lot of people watching this are going, what's he talking about? But if you know, you know, what I, you I, 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 I promise you this was a total accident, but it's a hilarious accident. <laughs> a man cited for speeding through Northwest Nebraska to get raising canes. So why? So the reason why Nash is bringing this up is purely coincidental in regards to me. I am infamous, particularly among all my friends, for quote only eating chicken fingers because I like chicken tenders. I like fried chicken. I eat lots of chicken. Chicken is a great food. Probably my favorite food, honestly, if we're being if we're being. Real here and fried chicken and and chicken tenders and chicken fingers are my favorite. And Raising Cane's is a fast food place known for it. Although hilariously, I've only had Raising Cane's once and I wasn't impressed by it. Uh, so this can't be me. Are we sure? I should try it Where again. Just to, listen. I was I was feeding through 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 Minnesota on my way to Popeyes. <laughs> Now the speeding here, it's like, okay, he was speeding. I don't see it. It's like we're going 80. No, no, no. Sunday around 1 p.m., a deputy spotted a 19-year-old South Dakotan man speeding through down Highway 57, about 12 miles south of Stanton. The deputy clocked the northbound driver at nearly 120 miles per hour. Deputy pulled the vehicle over, and the de driver told the deputy he was in a hurry to get home. But first, he needed to make a stop at Raising Cane's to get some chicken strips. Look, when you're hungry, you're hungry, man. 
You get you get that that craving, and it just occupies your thoughts. It's it's two a.m. You're trying. You're you're like, oh man, I'm gonna be up for a while. I need to get something in me to sustain me. What's open at this hour? Raising K. Oh my God, they're gonna close in five minutes. I gotta get there now. There are a lot of things I would speed for. Like I would double the speed limit for sure. There are a lot of things. Like if I got somebody going to the hospital. If if one of my pets was sick, sure. The chicken strips is gonna be there. The, I, I promise you, they don't run out. They never they do one thing. It's chicken strips. They literally have nothing else on the fucking menu. They have a sandwich. Do you know what's in the sandwich? Chicken strips. It's just one day they, they will have them. It will be there tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. What are you doing? Why? Did, 120. Like, that's that's when that's the faster you go, the worse the speeding ticket gets in terms of you know, overall consequences and shit. And double the speed limit. It's really bad. They don't like that. Just That's right. Also, sorry about typing. I'm responding to people asking me important questions. <laughs> I take that to mean they're not very important questions. They are deeply important questions asking when Raising Cane's is open. No. Uh <laughs> <sighs> All right. Next up, so, um, sometimes Nash, you just you just really hungry. I mean, I know I've driven two hundred in order to get to a KFC before. I'm joking. I hope this so. is joking. Um. Now this next one. Look, I understand. We are in this economy, this so-called economy right now, and a lot of pressure is put on Amazon drivers. A fuck load of pressure is put on Amazon drivers. They're, it's, it's, it's ridiculous what they put through, put them through. I don't even know how the fuck anyone could do that job. But while I do have sympathy, I also have limits. Amazon delivery dryer files, fires gunshots in South Philly after altercation with bus aid. Just wait. Philadelphia police are investigating after a delivery partner for Amazon fired gunshots during an altercation with a school bus aide. Legend gunman has been uh, identified as 28 year old Terrell Hall Williams been charged with aggravated assault and other offenses happened shortly after 3 PM. It's all started when police say a camp bus driver, a camp bus driver was unable to make a turn due to a parked Amazon van. Officials sell action news. The aide got on the bus, got out, asked one of the delivery drivers to move. That's when an altercation ensued. And at some point, police say Hall Williams retrieved a gun from the Amazon truck and opened fire. Action news learned that camp staff tried to intervene with the suspect still fired at least three shots. No injuries were reported. Police say the bus was full of children. Students were able to take shelter in nearby Edwin M. Stanton School. What the fuck? The entire fucking, what the entire fucking fuck is the fuck? You, you open, again, I understand the whole Amazon thing. They're hell it's hellish. But you open fire on a bus full of kids. How is this? How at any point? How is this going to work out well for you at that point? Like. What is going through your head that's going, OK, after I fire shots into the bus full of kids. Then things will be OK. And and I, I obviously. You make it a regular policy, I know, on the show to uh, to not do any stories where people die. So I'm assuming yeah. there were no injuries. Nobody heard. Yeah, no injuries reported. The kids are fine. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We would not be talking about this if people, somebody even been shot, even been grazed. I wouldn't be talking about this shit. They are so, I mean, fortunately, this guy can't shoot the damn thing. Thank God. What? An American with a gun and no training? Impossible. Look, the, the, <laughs> I'm going to make a joke now. This is purely a joke, and it is, it is just intended to be a callback joke. I shouldn't be joking in a situation like this, but... Look, the Amazon driver got really upset when the bu when the bus aide said that they were going to raising canes, and they were in a hurry. <laughs> That's all I got, because otherwise this, this, is, this, is just, this is just... just wow, wow, yeah, wow. Fuck you, bro. It's, it's hard to joke about this. Well, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's like... It could have gone horribly wrong, but good yeah. God, I'm just in my head. How does the sequence of events, does it go from this will turn out fine? I'm shooting at a school bus and this is going to be okay. Like, no, fucking no, there is no, there is no sequence of events where this turns out okay. This what feels like you have other you? issues going on here. A few. Criminy. Like, I understand you got to get out there. You got to make your money. This is not going, this, the money going away because you're going to need a lawyer and bail and it's not good. It's really not good. It's bad. Oh, okay. They, they, there's something. Moving along. And this is mm. Florida, of course. We have two Floridas in a row. Of course we do. Oh, of course it's Florida. There's something that's called a crime of opportunity. It's when people who normally would not engage and suddenly something becomes available and they're just like, you know what? I'm going to do this because it's right there. Who's going to find out? Destiny has presented this opportunity to me. Yeah, and you know what? I bet this guy... This guy looked around and was like, my, my time is now. <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. All right. Put it here. There you go. Florida man has junk food feast in closed Walgreen after five hours in bathroom. Smyrna Beach, Florida. Man was arrested early Monday morning for stealing various food and drink items from a Smyrna Beach Walgreens. According to the police department, officers responded to the store uh, in reference to a business alarm going off around 3 a.m. The alarm company told police there was a man inside the store, even though it had been closed since 10 p.m. Police say security footage showed the man, identified as Christopher Morgan, entering the store's bathroom at 9.40 p.m., but didn't show him leaving until 2.42 a.m. After being in the bathroom for nearly five hours, been there, Police say Morgan treated himself to various store items, including Tostitos spinach dip, chips, Reese's, and uh, Ghirardelli chocolate, Dr. Pepper, and a pack of Newport cigarettes. When officers arrived, they could see Morgan through the doors, taking the pack of cigarettes from behind the counter and body cam footage. Security alarms heard going off as officers helped the man unlock the doors from the inside. Once outside, officers began to place Morgan under arrest. One officer asked if anyone else inside the building, and Morgan, visibly confused, said he didn't know. I came in here to use the bathroom. According to police, Morgan resisted efforts, put him in the back of the patrol car, and spit at an officer once he was inside the vehicle. Because, of course, he did. I, okay, a few I, things. I, yeah. One. Look, guys, you don't understand. I missed the raising cage. It closed early, and I, and I was just so hungry. Two. Just, just, just call it back to it. Well, call it back to it. Yeah. Yeah, I got to do the callback. Why, mm -hmm. why didn't you know, usually back when I worked in a not a convenience store, but like any kind of place where we closed, uh, we would usually check the bathrooms and see yep. like, hey, is anybody in here? The store is closing. Like if he was having a problem, I understand. Probably what happened is shit. When we were doing this sort of stuff, they'd have us clean the bathrooms. Probably what happened was. This was a plan. It was a very stupid plan. Where he was in the stall, and I bet you anything, he pulled his legs up. Yeah. And hunched down. It was like, 
I'm not here. There's nobody home. Now, of all the, I can appreciate there's a little bit of ambition involved here because he's in the middle of this and thought, okay, if I just wait until the store closes, I can have all the snacks I want, which bless your heart. You had an idea, but you kind of hit a, hit a plateau on the level of what you were aiming for, right? Like you're in a Walgreens. There's a whole bunch of drugs back there. All of the drugs. Although my, my drugs. Is, like, let's assume you went to the bathroom at the end of the night. Right. You know, right you know, near when the time when the store was going to close or something like that. Because I right. can't imagine him waiting like, you know, three or four hours before the store closes. Because like, he would get bored in there after a while. Uh. I don't know. Maybe he brought a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, entering the store's bathroom at 9.40 p.m., which I think the state says, yeah, the store closed. It's in 10 p.m. 10. So he went in there 20 minutes early. Mm -hmm. He went in there. It was like, okay, I got to be really making sure that no one's around. Put on a podcast or something, you know? It's like, he, he like maybe like, like the best guess otherwise like like for for seriously I I imagine maybe he was uh, he was taking drugs back there or and or he, he was he, watching or he was watching Jenny's Star Wars video Star Wars hotel video There you go watch you know that, that, that Star Wars hotel there you video. go Lost track I mean, of that, time that, was like well crap well, I'm hungry right now so might as well yeah, because I mean, I, of all the things in the Walgreens, a pack of smokes, some Doritos, a Reese's, you have the very expensive and valuable drugs. Look, you I'm going to be here till morning. I'm going to put on her ever, ever more video now next. <laughs> I mean, the other alternative is he actually did fall asleep in there, woke up, and it was just like, oh, wow, what happened? Yeah, otherwise, at that point, well, what I would do if somehow that ever happened to me, which it wouldn't, I don't like using public restrooms, but, mm. it, but in that event, I probably would call the police at that point and say, like, hi, um, I accidentally locked myself in the store. Help, please. Help, please. Not, well, I'm a bit peckish. Let's, yeah. let's do some. Uh, we got here the morning. What else is on? <laughs> Well, as I said, we had two Florida, one after another. This one is, well, at least this one was a bit more ambitious. I, I will, I will give him that. He, 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 he tried. More ambitious than the than the cigs and Doritos. Yeah, he he did aim high. That's for sure. Florida man carrying nearly five hundred grams of weed tries to steal plane to meet girlfriend girlfriend. Man told officers he needed to meet his girlfriend in California. New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Florida man is behind bars after he attempted to steal an airplane at the New Smyrna Beach Municipal Airport so he could fly to California to meet his girlfriend while carrying nearly 500 grams of marijuana. On Saturday, officers were alerted that a stolen vehicle had been found at the airport. In the process of locating the vehicle, officers were flagged down by a man who said it was his vehicle that was stolen. The victim told officers that a man unknown to him jumped into the back of the truck and offered him $1,000 for a ride. Now, let's pause right there. If you had $1,000, you know what you can do with that? Money can be used for goods and services, like an airplane ticket. But the man then got out of the truck, but left a grinder, scale, and cell phone behind. Same time the victim flagged down the officer who described the incident in the truck, another officer at the airport was notified by a flight instructor that a man with a blue bag was spotted crouching on the wing of the plane. To be fair. <laughs> to be fair. There was literally, 
huh? He said that he offered a thousand dollars. Okay. Maybe he didn't actually have the thousand dollars, and he just lied to the guy. Fair. And also, fair. And also, let's be real here. That was a really good Twilight Zone episode, and he wanted to recreate it. <laughs> there was literally something on the fucking wheel. God damn it. Oh, my God. Um, according to a report, the man asked the flight instructor how he could fly a plane. Oh, yeah, just like riding a bicycle. You just like, you just like three buttons and you're good. Is that all you got to know? <laughs> By the time the officers... By the time officers reached the tarmac, the man was sitting in the right seat of the aircraft. When officers approached him, he asked again if they know how to fly a plane. <laughs> Dude, you know, there are YouTube tutorials for everything nowadays. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Excuse me, officer. Do, do you know how to do the airplane? No? Yes? Look, I'm I I'm I'm stumped here. A little hint? Maybe. Um oh the man then Oh boy, it gets better. Oh yes, oh yes. The man then jumped from the emergency exit window of the plane and plane was detained by officers after the man, identified as 25-year-old Robert uh Steenstra, was secured in the back of the patrol car. Officers turned the plane and took uh Steenstra's duffel bag, duffel bag for into evidence. Officers said they found uh Steenstra's ID, sunglasses, headphones, cigarellos, two lighters, a pocket knife, and a laptop. Glass pipe was also found and tested positive for anybody guess, anybody guess, anybody guess, methamphetamine. Hey, um, the defendant stated he purchased the aircraft for $20,000 cash recently. He was going to fly to California to meet his girlfriend. He advised he did not have paperwork and did not know the person he bought it from. Then it stated he was led into the airfield by security. It should be known. There is no security on duty at the airport. The security was invisible. That's the, you see, that's. They, they'd equipped their cloaking devices that he bought for them. He bought, after he all, bought, he bought. After all, he owns that blade and he's got to make sure it's secure. <laughs> I just, I, that's. And he looks he I, I he looks remarkably sober, I will say. Well when was this photo taken? Oh, this is a little less few years old, but yeah. It's remarkably sober. He had nearly five hundred grams of marijuana on him and that he illegally trespassed on the new Smyrna Beach Airport property. Was taken to the Lucia County Jail and charged with grand theft, possession of paraphernalia, trespassing in an operational area yeah. of an airport, possession of cannabis, and leaving the scene of a crash avoid damage. Jail records show Stienstra is being held on a $30,500 bond. Oh no! Yeah. He's going to have to sell his plane now! So, yeah. <laughs> that, that's... What, the, what did we learn this week? First thing we learned this week... Um, if, if you have a thousand dollars, you could buy a plane ticket. And if you say you have, you bought the plane, a receipt is necessary. Uh, they don't just take your word for that. I don't know how many, I don't know how many of you knew that, but uh pro tip, you, you need a receipt. That's so if after you get the plane, if there's something wrong with it, you can take it back. We learned that it's probably a bad idea to flee the scene of, a, of an accident if you're in an oil tanker. Yeah, that's that's one of those that I mean. That they're pretty sure they're going to fire. I think you're kind of running an oil rich mixture there. 